Welcome back everyone. You may have just bought your Samsung Galaxy S21. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a beginner's guide for it. And what better way to start than this awkward angle. Now when you first buy your Samsung Galaxy S21, you're pretty much going to come into this panel. Whether you have the S21, S21 Ultra, whatever the case is. Before even going through the setup, we basically want to look through the whole entire body of this device. So we have the panel up front. We have a front facing camera right here. The power button is on the right side as well as the volume up and down button which are right here. There's nothing else really on the outside except for our USB Type-C port right here, our SIM card eject little right here, the triple camera setup right here, our flash, and really everything else is there's really nothing there. This phone is pretty basic. They took out the micro SD card slot so there's really nothing we can do about there. But this back is a plastic back so keep that in mind. You're not really going to crack it necessarily if you drop it, but other parts of this phone can definitely break. But in terms of the outside, that pretty much covers it up. This one's pretty basic. Now, first of all, like I stated, if you want to turn on the display, you want to just click the button. The power button on the right, which is the sleep-wake button technically, you want to pop it up, pop it open, and that'll basically shut it off. But before you even really go through the whole entire setup, you may actually want to go ahead and eject the SIM card on your Samsung Galaxy S21, S21+, Plus, whatever the S21 you have. Now what you want to do is you want to locate on the bottom of the device right here. You'll basically see the little SIM card tool or a SIM card, a little eject button right here. Now what you want to do, and this is very important, you want to find your SIM card eject tool, which was probably in the box of your Samsung Galaxy S21. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and locate the tip of your little eject tool and you want to locate the little hole right here. So what you want to do is you want to put your little SIM card eject tool right inside of that little hole which is right here. It's the most left one if you're looking at basically at the display on the bottom. You don't want to do it to this hole. That's the microphone. You want to do it to this one. So let's go ahead and input the tool right here. And you want to put a little bit of force in it and you will see that it'll pop out a little bit. So all you have to do now is take this out and you want to put in the SIM card exactly how it shows on the instructions right here. As you can see, you do not want to put it on this side. You want to put it on this side right here. And once you have it all set up, all you have to do, and again, put it on the same side it takes, I think the nano SIM card, you want to go ahead and input it exactly how you had it. So line up the holes with each other, put it in, slide it in, and you'll pretty much see that your phone will, will should have discovered the SIM card by now. Now moving on, let's go ahead and go through the rest of this process. So you want to go ahead and click start. You can go ahead and read through these things if you want to. I typically don't. Then it's going to ask you for a Wi-Fi network. And once you're done filling out your Wi-Fi password, it actually may take a second or two for it to go through. It always tells you this little update thing, which can be kind of annoying. So keep that in mind. And as I stated before, you can always go ahead and step away from your phone, but you shouldn't probably necessarily restart it or do anything crazy like that. Now you can go ahead and copy your data from one Android to the other. You would go ahead and click next here. In this case, we're going to click don't copy and we're going to go ahead and continue this. And typically it does take anywhere from like five to 10 minutes for the whole entire process to go through. In this case, you want to go ahead and fill out your Google sign in information, your Gmail and all that. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and skip it, but make sure you fill that out because that's a really important thing if I'm being honest. You can you can typically keep these things on too. It's going to ask you to protect your device. I would recommend setting up some type of password, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and skip it so that way you don't have to waste time for me filling out all these little things. And then here, I would technically click skip. I never really signed up for a Samsung account. And at this point, you're signed up. So now we are going to be presented into our home screen. And this is your home screen. Anytime you do anything on your device, you are pretty much always going to be presented in this little display. However, when you first turn on your phone, so let's say it's from here, you'll get into the lock screen. So this is your lock screen right here. And you will see that you'll basically have the time right here. You can also double tap to wake the display and you can also double tap to turn off the display. So double tap to turn on, double tap to turn off. Again, there's your front facing camera. And here you'll have the time, you'll have the date in the middle and you'll also have some notification little icons right here. Now, whenever you get a text or something, it'll pretty much come into this panel. You can also access your control center if you swipe down right here. You can get access to your Bluetooth, your little location toggles, all this other stuff you can go and swipe right. And there's a ton of little things at One UI 3, which is the software the Samsung Galaxy S21 runs. It's a really good piece of software, in my opinion, that's gotten better. It's not perfect, but it's gotten better. You also have the brightness slider toggle right here. So if you want to increase the brightness, you would go ahead and slide this up. If you want to decrease the brightness, you would go ahead and do that. So that's really a huge, you know, little walkthrough of the control center as well as a lock screen. If you want to get out of the lock screen, you would go ahead and swipe up. And now you're into the home screen as stated before. Now you have the navigation bar buttons on the bottom that are actual buttons. The little one in the middle clicks, takes you back home. 
the back button takes you back and the little three lines at the side actually take you to the multitasking panel right there. So now at this point, all you have to do is click home. And whenever you want to go back home from your main screen, you would just click this button. Now, you, most of the time people want to turn on gestures and I'll show you how to do that later on. So let's go ahead and do that now. In order to get into our app panel, what you want to do is you want to swipe up and you'll pretty much come into all your apps that you have on your device. So as you can see, there's a ton of them. Typically, you know, if you sign into your Google account, there'll be more. But what we want to do now is we want to make our way to our settings. So the settings icon looks just like this. So we want to go ahead and click on it. And now I'm going to break down a little bit of the settings. This is a place you're going to go ahead and probably spend a little bit of time on, to be honest. You can go ahead and mess and modify with each one of these things. So within connections, these are typically your Wi-Fi connections, Bluetooth connections, and different parameters like that. You can also see your data usage, put your phone in airplane mode, and you can even you know modify some more connection settings if you'd like. Hopping out of this one, you want to go ahead and click on sounds and vibration. And this will give you some more you know capability into what you want to do with your system sounds and all that stuff. There's a notification panel as well so if you want to modify the notifications that you get on your device and whatnot or if some notifications are not working you can go ahead and check that out from here the display again if you want to go ahead and you know change some other display parameters which we'll get into in a second you can change your wallpaper themes home screen lock screen a little tidbits like that biometrics and security which is your passwords your you know screen locks your you know face unlocks fingerprints all that stuff location, privacy, Google accounts and backup, advanced features, digital well-being, and all these things, so on and so forth. Really, the main ones you're going to mess with are display, notifications, apps potentially, your battery and device care, and software update. This is a place that if you want to go ahead and update your device, you would go ahead and click software update. You would go and click download and install, and it will essentially install the latest update that you have. And if you just got your Samsung Galaxy S21, any version, I would honestly recommend every single one of you to go and update your device. As soon as you get it, it's probably going to be the best thing to do in this case. Now, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and just pause it so it doesn't update while I'm filming this video. But that's pretty much a walkthrough of your settings. Now, let's say you wanted to go ahead and change your navigation bar to something of the more newer standard, which is pretty much the gesture-based design. What we want to do now is we want to make our way back to the settings. But if you watched, if you click the home button, what you can do is now you can actually just tap the little multitasking panel and you'll actually get into the little app itself. And to click home, you go and click home here again. So click multitasking. You can just hop into the app just like this. Now, instead of using these nav bar buttons down here, like I stated before, let's go ahead and change it over to the newer gesture based design that One UI 2 brought. So let's go ahead and go up. We want to click on display, which is right here. Then what we want to do is we want to scroll down until we get into navigation bar, which is right here. So let's click on nav bar. Now it's going to give us a couple of different options. What we want to do is we want to click on the swipe gestures option and you will see at the bottom the nav bar button or nav bar, you know, just went away. Now this is really cool. All we have to do now is instead of clicking the button and all that stuff, we just have to swipe up and now we can actually utilize the new nav bar button instead of clicking buttons all the time. So now instead, if we want to go ahead and let's say we want to, you know, go back home, well, let's say we're in an app, all we have to do Let's say we're in Play Store, some other app, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is swipe up and you will see that it'll take me back home. Sometimes it will take you to a different app, but all you have to do is open up the specific app, swipe up, and it'll go ahead and take you back home. Now you can actually see that sometimes when I swipe up, it takes me to the every other page. Well, that's actually a feature. Instead of you know going into the multitasking panel or whatever, all we have to do if we want to open up the last app, all we have to do there is just swipe up and you'll see that we can actually get into our multitasking panel this way. Now our multitasking panel is pretty much all of our you know most recent apps that we used. So if you want to go back into, let's say our Galaxy Store, or let's say we want to go back into settings, well, we can go ahead and go back into settings like this. If we want to go back home, again, just swipe up. But if we're in settings, let's say we just went back into settings right here and we want to go into our last app, well, all we have to do is just swipe at the bottom and we can actually get back into the last app just like this. So instead of actually swiping up and then getting here and then clicking here and then clicking here, we can just literally go like this and go back from one app to the other. And this is really cool. It'll really act like you know what you're doing with your phone, to be honest. And that's something that I utilize all the time on any device that I use. So that's a little bit of a breakdown of gestures. While you're at the little multitasking panel, a good practice to have, first of all, a little breakdown. You have a little search bar up here, which is, you know, really cool. You can still access your control center and all that. This is a list of your most used apps or the most recent apps that you've used. You can also modify these things too. 
but also you can go ahead and utilize this and click close all and this will close out all the apps in the background. Now this is pretty important because it'll go ahead and actually allow you to go ahead and close out of all those apps and it'll save you a little bit of RAM in the background which is great. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is exactly how to go ahead and screenshot on your Samsung Galaxy S21. Now this is pretty important. Everybody needs to learn how to screenshot. It's a very, very useful thing. And it, you can do it without buttons, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with buttons in this case. What you wanna do is you want to look on the side of your device, like I stated, and you want to locate the volume buttons and the power button right here. So sometimes people call this the big speed button. I just still call it the power button. And what you're going to do is once you have a little thing on your display that you want to go ahead and screenshot, you want to hold the power button and the volume down button at the same time. You don't want to hold one and then click the other. You want to press them down at the same time until you see a little like screen capture on your phone itself. So go and hold them down. You'll see this little capture that just came up. Now you'll get a little pop-up at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and redo it. So click there and you will get this little pop-up. Now it's going to ask you if you want to allow, you want to click allow and then you'll see this little pop-up at the bottom and all you have to do now is click on the little photo in this case, I'll recommend using Samsung's built-in gallery, but you can also use Google Photos. You can click just once or, you know, allow, it's the same thing. And now what will happen is, is that it will take you straight into that photo you just took. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and share this photo to somebody else. We can edit the photo, like the photo ourselves and favorite it. And we also have a couple of more options right here too. In this case, let's go ahead and share the photo. So we can click here and we can share this photo off to so many different people. We can send it through Google Maps. I don't know why you'd want to do that. We can set, save it as a contact. We can Bluetooth it to somebody. We can message it to somebody. We can print it off. There's a lot of other options down here. You can even, if somebody else has a Samsung device, you can also, you know, send it through that. But that's pretty much the whole way of screenshotting as well as sending it off to somebody if you'd like. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is how to put your phone in dark mode. And this is something that I always prefer. And if you're a beginner, this can actually save some battery life on your device too. So it's a no brainer. And if you don't really care about battery life, whatever, then it's not a big deal. But what you want to do is you want to swipe up, swipe to the side, and you want to get into your settings panel, just like how we were before. Now, once you're here, you want to scroll down and get into display. So right here is display. You want to click there. And now at the very top, you'll get the light mode or you'll get the dark mode. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and click dark mode and you'll see the whole entire phone actually becomes dark. Now, this is really cool because it changes the whole entire UI. Basically, you know, everything was kind of already dark in the beginning with, but it'll change a lot of different things throughout the whole entire device. Even our control center has now gotten dark too, which this is really, really cool. So if you want to go back off dark mode, you want to go back into settings, just like how we were before. You want to scroll up into display, which is right here, and you want to go back into light mode, which is right there. So that's exactly how to enable dark mode. Now we talked about screenshotting earlier, so let me show you exactly how to screen record on your Samsung Galaxy S21 as well, just in case you're a beginner. Now what you want to do, like we did before, you want to go ahead and get into your control center. And you can do that by dragging down on the side of the device like this on the top and then scroll down again and you'll come into your little control center toggle. Now you want to locate, not that one, you want to locate the specific toggle that says screen recording. So as you can see, I don't really see it. As you can see, I mean, I don't really see it. I don't know if you see it. But what you can do is you can go and click this plus button right there and you should be able to add the screen recording toggle here. So as you can see, they hide it sometimes. I don't know where it is. And I take that back, it was right here. So you typically it's on the other one. So what you wanna do is find the specific screen recording toggle. All you wanna do is go ahead and click on it. You want to go ahead and click while using the app or only this time. You wanna click while using this app or only this time. Go ahead and click start recording. It's gonna count down from three. And what it'll do is basically, it'll start recording whatever you're doing on your display. So whatever you're doing, if you're scrolling through, if you're talking, whatever, it's going to go ahead and record all of that, which is great. And once you go ahead and be done with recording, what you want to do is you want to click the stop button and you will see that it will go ahead and stop recording. Now, what you can, and it will go ahead and give you this little notification. What also happens, you can also click pause and it'll go ahead and pause that recording as well. So let's go ahead and say we're done recording. Well, let's say we want to go ahead and send it off or even look at it. What we want to do is we want to go to our gallery app. So we want to scroll up from here again and we want to locate the app. So look for gallery, which is right here. Go and click on it. And this is the screenshot we took earlier. But if you swipe down, not like that, but if you swipe down, okay, here we go. You'll basically see that we now have a video recording of our app. So there's a screen recording we just did. We can go ahead and click on it and we'll basically be able to see that screen recording that we just did. So that's really cool. All we have to do now is click here and we can send it off to somebody, share it like I stated before. So click share and it'll go ahead and send it off to somebody. We can post it on LinkedIn, put it on Google Maps, put it on Google Drive. But that's pretty much how to screen record as well.
Now on the back of this phone, like I stated before, we do have wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. So what this means, is if we have a wireless charger, what we can do is basically place our phone on the back of it like this, and it will go ahead and charge up the device just like so. But if we want, we can also enable reverse wireless charging, and it will go ahead and charge up another device on the back of it just like this. So as long as our device supports you know, wireless charging, my Galaxy S20 also supports wireless charging, we should be able to go ahead and enable wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. So what we want to do is we want to make our way back into our settings app. So you want to go here, you want to click settings. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and scroll down until you get into the little battery option. So battery and device care. Now you're going to get this little pop-up. You want to go ahead and click battery. And you'll see this little little option at the bottom that says wireless power sharing we want to click here and we want to click on so what happens when we click on and we go ahead and turn our phone over you'll basically see that once we put our wireless charging phone on top of it it'll go ahead and wirelessly charge the other device and this is really really cool again it's not the best if you want to save the most amount of power but it's a really cool it's exactly how you enable wireless power sharing on your samsung galaxy s21 you can also disable it like it just you know automatically disabled it but those are pretty much the main features and a little bit of a walkthrough on your samsung galaxy s21 obviously if you want to do the basic things like you know take phone calls you would click here to do messages you would click here to take photos you would click here and if you want to go and click on your internet and get access to internet you would go and click here so that's really pretty much it if you guys have any other questions or anything like that let me know in the comment section below hit the like button that'll mean so much but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really does count so it means so much if you guys can hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my other channels more importantly than everything else, every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.